President Yoon's been also been busy meeting with world leaders on the sidelines of APAC in the hope of gaining support for pressuring North Korea against our recent deployment of troops to Russia. Our Kim Doen has the details. APAC was an opportunity for President Yoon Song Yeol to meet with key leaders who play crucial roles in dealing with North Korea amid the regime's deployment of military support to Russia. President Yoon met with Japanese Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba on Saturday local time on the sidelines for the second bilateral summit between them in around a month. Given the increasingly severe security environment surrounding us, including recent developments with North Korea, it is a critical task to continuously strengthen cooperation between Japan and South Korea. The two leaders also discussed plans for next year, as it will be the 60th anniversary of normalizing diplomatic relations. Yun and Ishiba also met U.S. President Joe Biden during the summit based on an agreement to hold trilateral talks on an annual basis made during the Camp David summit 15 months ago. The three nations also adopted a joint statement following the summit and announced the creation of the Trilateral Secretariat to institutionalize the overseeing of the trilateral cooperation following the Camp David summit. This is likely to be my last trilateral meeting with the security group, and I'm proud to have helped take one of the parts of building this, uh, this partnership. And I think it's built to last. That's my open expectation. Earlier on Friday, President Yoon also met with Chinese President Xi Jinping, which was a reunion after a year, and held a sideline summit. President Yoon, seeking China's support in pressuring North Korea, called for close cooperation between the two nations. 특히 북한의 연이은 도발과 우크라이나 전쟁, 러북 군사 협력에 대응해 한중 양국이 영내 안정과 평화를 도모하는 데 협력해 나가기를 바랍니다. As always, President Xi stayed reserved and re-emphasized his stance that although global circumstances are changing, the two nations should commit to the original spirit of their ties, not directly addressing issues with North Korea. Regardless of how the situation evolves, South Korea and China should remain committed to the original spirit of the diplomatic ties, uphold the path of good neighborly friendship, and adhere to the goal of mutual benefit and shared prosperity. By leveraging their geographical proximity, cultural affinities, and deeply integrated economies, both nations can maximize their strengths and foster closer cooperation. The two leaders also discuss economic cooperation, such as renegotiating the FDA as next year becomes the 10th anniversary since its activation, and additional fields, such as the service sector, could be included. Kim Doyeon, Arirang News.